OK, let's talk about climate change and the Great Barrier Reef. How many times have you heard that the reef is under threat and that climate change is to blame? How often have you heard we have to tackle the climate crisis in order to save the reef? I mean, this has always been emotional blackmail. The reef is beautiful, a natural wonder, no one wants it harmed, but the evidence it's under threat has always been thin. Climate activists have been talking the reef down, pretending it's dying off, in order to provide more ammunition to their global warming arguments, as if coral reefs don't thrive in warmer waters elsewhere anyway. Brave experts like Peter Ridd and Jennifer Marahassi have lived on the reef, dived on the reef. They know it well as practising scientists and they've reassured us that the reef is healthy. But that hasn't stopped the doomsayers. The incredible natural glory of the Great Barrier Reef is threatened and I want my daughters to be able to come back and I want them to be able to bring their daughters or sons to visit. And I want that there 50 years from now. Ensuring that future generations get to enjoy the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, the Great Barrier Reef, of course, we know, is vulnerable. It's been neglected by this government. I absolutely acknowledge that climate change is a threat to our Great Barrier Reef as it is a threat to every coral reef in the world. The Great Barrier Reef will die, as will the 60,000 jobs that depend on it. The Great Barrier Reef uh, clearly being affected by climate change. So much alarmism, so much catastrophism as ever. But now another study has examined coral reefs off the Sunshine Coast just south of Great Barrier Reef and close to heavily developed areas. And guess what? The 50 volunteers who dived on and closely examined 11 reef areas found the reefs were healthier and far more extensive than expected. More good news contradicting the global warming narrative. Let's talk again to reef expert... Peter Ridd. Thanks for joining us, uh, Peter. This uh, news would have pleased you, but presumably not surprised you at all. Not surprising at all. Uh, actually, what really did surprise me is you get a lot of these reports where they go out and they find wonderful coral and then they surprise, say, oh, we're really surprised. But then at the end of the report, they still say, but it's all doomed anyway because of climate change. The really beautiful thing about this report is that they didn't say that. They just said, the reef there was really wonderful, it was surprising, but they didn't then try to harp on the climate change thing. So that's a real huge plus for the scientists and also for the ABC journalists who reported on it. Yeah, we should note the ABC reported that. I don't think it led their 7 o'clock news, but they did report on it. When you say it was surprising that the reefs were in such good condition, is that because of climate change or because of the amount of uh, development in that part of uh, Queensland on the Sunshine Coast? Well, look, I don't think it should be a surprise there at all. I mean, the Sunshine Coast is much more developed than up on the Great Barrier Reef, and those corals are nowhere near as, as beautiful as up on the Great Barrier Reef, simply because the reef is so big. Um, but it shouldn't be a surprise. I think it was just that a lot of these have never really been mapped before. We know so little about the seabed that it's very easy to think there's no coral out there, and they went out and they found much more coral than they thought, which is great. Fantastic news. We celebrate it for sure. Now, it so happens, of course, that the Environment Minister, Tanya Plibersek, today has cancelled, axed, rejected a coal mine proposal for further north in Queensland. Let's have a listen to how she justified this decision. I've decided that the adverse environmental impacts are simply too great. The mine is an open-cut coal mine less than 10 kilometres from the Great Barrier Reef and the risk of pollution and, and irreversible damage to the reef is very real. Tanya Plibersek there, who's a, a Green Left politician, Socialist Left member of the Labor Party from inner city Sydney, making that decision up in Queensland. Peter, is there any evidence that a coal mine 10 kilometres from the coast could have an adverse effect on the Great Barrier Reef? No, and what she said there was utterly and totally incorrect, uh, bordering on deception. She must know that this, the, the Great Barrier Reef is about 100 kilometres from the coast. Yes, the mine is 10 kilometres from the headwaters of a mangrove creek, which itself is 100 kilometres at least from the Great Barrier Reef. So what she said was completely deceptive. The public will get utterly the wrong impression. And people like a lot of my friends and relatives who work in coal mines will just look at that and think, these guys are not, not serious about facts and the truth.
But you, you watch this closely anyway. Some of the biggest coal exporting mines in the world are in Queensland and the ships go in and out to, uh, around the reef and there's been no evidence of damage there, has there? None, none whatsoever. And, and this is the point. We look after it very, very carefully. And every single one of those uh, ships has to have an Australian pilot on board to guide them through the reef. Uh, and these coal mines are a long, long way from the reef. It's just a joke that they're, they're making up these excuses.